Greetings for some late night drawing. It is 8.40 in the evening. This is Dave Herman, alias Daz the Artist. You're looking at my uh, some illustration here in uh, Affinity Designer. Let me put the full thing on the screen for you. So we're going to zoom in and view, uh, zoom in to fit. So this is something I sketched up the other day and dabbled in and then I didn't do anything with it. So now what I thought I'd do is work on it a little bit in front of you. So uh, let's zoom in on the figure on the left. When I do that, we're going to work on the head a little bit. Put that in the middle of the screen. And uh, this is just fun stuff I'm doing here, you know. I can move anything around here and play with it later, but... Oh, pardon me. I do like drawing, and I just thought I'd uh, take a break from the Mask of Jaru, which I'm drawing on for myself. So, let's get into pen, uh, pencil, and uh, we're in Pixel Persona, and I've got a brush. And I'm just going to do some black and uh, line work here a little bit, just to... Keep your eye on the drawing. Now I'm in the left-hand side of the face. That large, kind of strange-looking machine eye. And there's one on the other side there. And it goes. they go into different shapes. This is an asymmetrical face. And some parts are symmetrical. So it makes it interesting. Then I'm drawing on the uh, Wacom Cintiq 24-inch Pro, something new addition to my studio. I've had a lot of fun with it. I highly recommend it to anybody, and I have no affiliations with Wacom. In fact, that was very difficult at first, but they were very helpful and got me all hooked up. So I decided to uh, get one. <laughs> if you live anywhere near the uh, state of Oregon, uh, they have a walk-in, one-of-a-kind place called the Wacom Welcome Center where you may bring your laptop or desktop in and hook it up to any of their products. That way, uh, I did that with my laptop to test the interaction of the Cintiq with the softwares I use. And just to see how it felt, because I never used one in my life, never saw one in my life. And uh, it convinced me to buy it. So, now you're watching me draw on one. I, I did draw for six years uh, as I continue to teach myself digital art. I used their uh, Intuos Pro Medium Slate tablet, which was excellent. No problems with that, but it's way more fun to draw directly on the screen, and it's also way more costly. But the uh, experience is way different even than the, the tablet. I mean, the... The monitor has uh, this amazing glass. I don't know what this glass is made out of. How do they get this texture in there and a non-glare look? And uh, yet it's bright enough to work on. And I don't know. It's mystifying to me. This is really a modern device. Uh, it seems way different than any computer I've ever worked on or touch tablet or anything. I totally dig it. I couldn't afford to put the engine in it. If I could, I certainly would, just so I'd have a completely touch tablet where I don't need a mouse and keypad occasionally. But you can bring up the online keyboard. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of those things for some reason. So you're watching me uh, separate some of the details in this quick sketch I did the other day. And now I'm uh, enhancing with black line work a little bit just to pull up some quick details before I get into coloring and you know, texturizing or whatever I'm going to do with this. Give it some kind of jelly. You know what I mean? So there's a set of eyes up on the top. Those could be air hole breathers underneath or eyes into the next space going down like a totem pole. I'm really starting to get into the totem pole idea. Uh, let's up the opacity a little bit and get some kind of a jelly look to this. I've been practicing jelly my own way. I don't use a jelly uh, function. They have one for type, but uh, I'm not sure if you can incorporate it with your art. 
So what I do is I just kind of paint something like a jelly. So I'm going to put a new layer on. It's just the extreme contrast of highlights against um, the background. So the more contrast you have between light and dark, the, like when you're painting a metal, you want that, that glossy look. So you have a highlight, a popcorn burst of light somewhere on a dark area. And you can create that effect kind of in here. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit and make another video as I do because I just like posting stuff about me and showing what I learned so I can share it with people. I don't make a dime doing any of this. <laughs> I'm a pauper artist, believe me, semi-retired tattoo man. So here we'll put a high contrast line up on the forehead, just kind of like so. And brighten it at one end, kind of like a electric current, just kind of Zipping around. You can put a highlight inside if you want, like like just uh, so something like that. Gives it that kind of a jelly feel. And then you can put a drop shadow in somewhere underneath that uh, jelly to give it depth. This is what I'm figuring out, and I'm sharing with you right now. So I could do like uh, something like like so. So like it's on a glass surface and it's casting a shadow below that, that surface down to something below, see, like that. And you can uh, do the same thing with your dot, depending on what direction you want to go, but see like that. And it kind of gives the lift. And then to really give the lift, get in there and put some... Uh, super high contrast to it so let's see here you know just like this white I'm going to hit it right in the center see how that lifted it up off that dot of shadow that's cast and same thing here, if I get it up in the top of this, like, comet-looking piece of light, now it starts to become a jelly head. That kind of look. Of course, there's a lot of my lines and scrub stuff in here, the uh, gesture sketching as I develop uh, artwork. You know, I could put a, a nice contrast beep up here on the top of this eye, and add one here, like so, and then put the shadow which could be any kind of shadow, so let's say like deep purple, which I think is good against yellow. You could put one in the bottom of the eye, say like so, and then go to black, really down there, like that. And now it's kind of a coming at you. And, uh, you know, I can develop all these highlights, say I want to get some fuchsia going in space, Actually, let's stick with the purples. So let's uh, let's go with purple. Let's get a light color. Let's uh, pop some of these highlights up on these edges. It's got a very nice feel on the glass. And you can even squeeze, uh, say, like a reflected highlight on the left-hand side of the head's, the forehead. Let's get that kind of in there. And if it, you want it to be kind of smooth looking, so otherwise it makes you think the texture of the head is kind of uh, wobbly looking, kind of bumpy or whatever. So kind of keep that smooth. Can go over it even like that, and then come back and hit it again. So, let's do that. We just hit it now. Gives you kind of that look. Uh, you know, it could be way down here even. Look. Just kind of works. See, it just kind of works. Makes your mind, your mind kind of makes. All this magical stuff work, like how far is that glass up, and 
uh, you know, the, the look. So let's, let's do some other stuff like that. Watch me uh, just work around here. Kind of playing with my medium. Like you play with your spoon and your kit, you know. Um, he's playing with his art stuff. <laughs> and then if you don't like it, you just edit and undo. So let's, uh, let's do a little of that. Because we're going to go into the mouth with red or dark colors. Okay. So I'm going to go with some black up in there instead, underneath the lip kind of space up there at the very top. Kind of fade that to the corners. Strong in the middle, fade to the corner. And then kind of box this out. It's kind of a weird expression, like it has no emotion. It's like the machine itself is just opened up its uh, peculiar uh, you know, apparatus like you would open up the lens of a, a camera, let's say, the shutter, you know, has all these flexible surfaces, asymmetrical, let's pull some pieces out, move some pieces in, not quite a smile, could be a smile, you don't know, but there's interesting lines, and then I'll just play around with this a little bit and uh, see what I come up with. That's the fun of art, you know, I just, uh, see I was coming up with a concept for some kind of a creature. Don't know what it would be in a video game or uh, you want to build this out of a 3D printer and let your kid play with it. You could do that. I would come up with this design. Somebody else could come up with the mathematics to make it. <laughs> That's not my forte. But I would definitely come up with the entity. So you're watching me do that. And we're creating. We're doing it and you see how it slowly develops right before your eyes the three-dimensional look the jelly look kind of uh, my way you know just what I gleaned off of looking at that quickly what I notice uh, and uh, you know I don't have a jelly button <laughs> and I'm jelly I'm jelly there you go. See? Starting to have a life of its own. Now to bring this constantly to us, I'm going to go lighter and lighter in color, and then I'll build with shadow if I want. But see, I can make this really gloss out right here with some high contrast, and then put a heat source in there. And now, uh, see? It's starting to look alive. And uh, that's what's exciting about it. Let's kind of smooth out some of this stuff. That could be tucked under there like it's attached. And let's, see, let's pan up, take a look at that one second. At the same time, I'm going to uh, take a peek at my cell phone. Just one second, I thought I heard it ping. And I just check Messenger real quick. And nobody, and we're good. Messenger's okay. So there you go. Back to the art. Uh, let's put some of that highlight stuff here and there. This is how I create my, my stuff, just on the fly. Again, this will give me an idea. And sometimes I may get so immersed in one of these things that I go, oh, man, I've got to complete this. It's fine art. Just work on it for 100 hours or whatever. But uh, this won't be the case, I don't think. And uh, it's, they lure me in every time. My art's just waiting to trick me. I say, hey, does, does draw me? Come on. Uh, 
Alright, let's get into some oranges. Oh. There we go. I'm going to have a save here. If you don't save, you will regret it. <laughs> Especially when your computer collapses. It just goes, ah, I can't process, I'm lost, I'm in limbo, have a spinning blue wheel for a while. You do not want the spinning, spinning blue wheel in Windows. It means you're dead for a while. You gotta have some patience and tell yourself not to do whatever it is you did that made that happen. Which usually is either making your strokes go backward and forward over each other, which is way too much information to process, or not saving very frequently. It only takes a second to reach over there and save. So, the hardest lesson for all the artists to learn because we get in the zone. And when we be in the zone, we be not paying attention. You know? You know what I mean? You do. Yes. Alright, so let's kind of keep this going with the color wheel colors. So now it has to make sense. So we run this down one side, one side, one side, one side. And put some jelly in there, which is the white highlights that uh, can have a, a bump at the top like that. You can have a contrast line at the bottom like that. So it's kind of like corn candy, you know? Okay. So Halloween corn candies get that glossy, see-through look going. And irregularity, which makes this interesting. You know, I kind of do my thing, some jelly look to it. And still have it look very bizarre, because that's what it does. Now, these almost look like teeth, right? It's like some really bizarre teeth. So let's go with that gum. This mouthful could be gum. I don't know. Let's see how that works out. Let's go with dark. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, optical illusions. I love this little gum in between the teeth. See that? I had no idea where I was going, but it finds a way to teach me what to see. So that looked real cool. Now some highlights up there. Let's uh, pop open our color chooser. And uh, let's put a little bit of that. A little bit lighter. Right there. Just weirdness, the weirdness machine. Uh, stuff is weird, you know. Let me tell you. I dream it up, and then I dig it. See the eyes to get that look. Where it's almost like they're UFOs. I got little light, lights going around in perspective all the way around the eye. See, so let's save. Looking cool. Looking cool. Mm hmm See, these are really bright pops. So that's when you get in there again. Just pop it. Shape it. Right, connect it. Some lines in there. Some strangeness. Let's draw that together. Probably should magnify this a little, let's, uh, let's go into it, see what's hooking up here, some weirdness, I can't see when it's that tiny, there we go, uh, what am I going on here, so, yeah, yeah, there we 
Google. Pretty interesting with the bumps. Keep the bumps on the full side. Shape it. Save it. It's kind of uh, jelly that and jelly the gum. So it's a little, little bit of jelly. So it's just. Some highlights around there. I don't know. I just make it up as I go, guys. And gals, peeps, artists. I always mean men and women both. Even though I see guys, girls, whatever. It's all good. Nothing intentional, derogatory ever meant by me. It's just hard to talk and draw at the same time. You know that. You know it. You know it. Don't hold me by the. Don't hold my feet to no fire now. You know it's tough to draw and talk at the same time. It takes years to get this bad talking and drawing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you just uh, playing around. Doesn't have to make a sense by any rule. It's making an interesting picture. You know, we do apply some of the rules of art to it, and some things we just do. We just do for a look. You know, it's like anything mixed media wise. I use chalk. I use county crayon. I use acrylic. Just put some stuff in there that you just don't know what it is. It's textures, it's design, it's, it's, it's full in the eye. Uh, it's just cool stuff, cool stuff. Let's get into the black and tidy up some shadow stuff in here and there. I'm not a big fan of black all the time, so I like gray. So if I go into swatches, Swatches and pick a gray. Grays are kind of cool. I use a gray. I use black if I really want ultimate darkness. So let's say here where the corner of the eye meets, I'll go really dark. Just all black. Right? And really black in the other one. And follow the contour of that UFO looking eyeball. Where it bulges on. Because who knows? Maybe UFOs come from this guy. You think? I don't know. But uh, people like to see me finish my art or they un unfollow me. I noticed that, and I just have so much stuff going. As a as a guy who just uh, pursues whatever he wants every day of his life, self-employed, semi-retired tattoo man, he either gets up, does a tattoo, goes to a gym, or works out, or uh, takes a bike ride, or goes hiking, or sits down and digitally draws for ten hours. You know, just stuff. So this one I'm picking up and finishing a little bit more. So people can see me get down to some crazy because they get mad, I can tell they they follow me the minute something cool pops up on Art Station. That's David Isaac Herman, D A V I D H D A V I D I'm trying to talk and draw. Uh, for David, and then I-S-A-A-C for Isaac, and then H-E-R-M-A-N. So David Isaac Herman on ArtStation. And uh, if somebody likes something, and I don't respond by continuing to work on that project, boy, in two days that person just undoes me. Which is cool. 
<laughs> I mean, I like to get some exposure. I want to sell some prints. And so I got my own way of doing stuff. You know? And that's what's happening. Plus, I've dialed in <clears throat> my laptop and my tablet here, my, my monitor. I've got a uh, Asus G750JM Gamer that's six years old. I'm the original owner. I haven't done anything to it. It's stock. I hooked it up to the Cintiq 24-inch Pro monitor. It's working like a charm now. Took a little while. And uh, I've also got a Polaroid monitor hooked up to that. And I've also uh, I got a lot of stuff plugged into there. I've got the uh, hardline Ethernet. I've got uh, let's see from the Cintiq Pro. I have a cable called an AI cable that goes into a Thunderbolt connector. I have a that's for the video, and then I have a data cable, it's a USB that goes in, a power cord, and then from my Polaroid monitor I have a HDMI cable. Going into my laptop I have a mouse, conventional mouse, the Microsoft uh, you know, magic white one with the uh, half a dozen buttons on it, the original super cool mouse, I have one of those original ones, IntelliMouse or whatever it was called. And uh, see, is the top of the head in this? Let me just pull this down a little. Yeah. So it's, uh, well, this is shaping up into something cool. Oh, hey, didn't mean to work on the hand and go back to brush. Okay. So delicately. Now, you can see these lines. There's 8,100 some odd layers of pressure on the new pen that they have uh, from Wacom. Comes with your tablet or your monitor or you can buy it. It's the, the pen number two. First generation pen was not 8,100 levels. It was somewhere around uh, 2,000 I think or something like that. So let's just let's see how I'm enlarged this, then I can shape it more. Find my designs that I kind of lay out accidentally by sketching. Mm -hmm. And then I pick up on those sketch lines or the dual lines or whatever. I just think, oh, hey, okay, I'll follow the product, that make a bezel. Can't do too many lines without saving. All right. That looks pretty darn swanky. <laughs> so, let's view this all at once. View. Zoom. Zoom to fit. That's cool. Much, much improved. Got the whole figure to do. Now, looking at that, those blues almost look like eyes in there. And the could look like a wolf kind of face or uh, puma. So let me see something here. Let me go back. Let me drag that over. Make that bigger. Yeah, see, looking down, that looks almost like a monkey or a puma or something to me. There's so many things I can pull out of here. As you see, I developed the 3D look. And... Uh, Let's say I wanted this neck to look kind of jelly. So what would I do? I'd go into my color, I'd take some white, and I'd get the brush. And let's just uh, let's just give it a hard. Oh, every time I touch that, I don't do it hard. Touching here, high contrast line, and maybe a spot down here of the jelly. And I'm calling the white. Let's see how big we want that. 
Maybe keep that one soft and make a super bright one up here. Into this. And then, then if that's reflected, we'll put some yellow in there. See if we can get a good yellow. The green. Add some black down the bottom of it. Now I'll put a gloss line over that. So I'm a detail freak, you know. Now it's an opening. Put some up here. Something here or over here. That's that's uh let's go harsh right there. And Somewhat across here. And then we we'll come down, we're going to use a light, bright shade of orange. Just with the energy straight down the middle. Just free hands. See that? It's kind of cool. You know, the force. Then I can go even lighter and hit it up here where I want it to be raised. And then softly blend it in. I'm telling you, these uh, these new pens, these new monitors, they're just fabulous. Uh, I did try other stuff in stores, other brands, and uh, unfortunately for the Cintiq, I had to go to uh, Portland, Oregon. But it was a great field trip. I had a wonderful time in the city of Portland. So good food. Nice couple of drinks and bar hopping, just nothing heavy. But since we were there, I went off the buddy and he, he and I just had a like a lunch with some uh, a burger and some drinks and uh, went to uh, walk them. And then after that, we did something else and walked down by the water and you know, took in Portland. So I highly recommend it if you live close enough. Or if you really want to do just a field trip to go out and see their equipment, it's free to go to the Wacom Experience Center in Portland, Oregon. And I just found it online by accident. So even though I'm promoting it here, it's just because I had a good time. So it's like if you go to Disneyland, which I never have, but uh, if you did something like that and you wanted other people to know about it, you're going to tell them. So just sharing an experience. Don't make a bound. Nobody's telling me to do it. You may hit it. <laughs> it's a big showroom. You got plenty of space to walk around. And uh, it's just two guys were in there in the day. I would have just like artists, local artists. They just hang out in the showroom. Nobody tries to sell you anything, and you can't buy anything there. So there's not going to be any arm twisting or any of that. It's strictly, uh, hey, thanks for coming out, trying our stuff, you know. If you decide to buy something, you got to go on the line and do that. We can't help you. Kind of an interesting uh, approach. And they have meetings, and they have famous artists, I think, come there and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, not guys like me. Sorcerers. Watching this, man, for 34 minutes, you get some, some stuff. And you just slow down these videos and watch what I do. And then mimic it. Or challenge me. Drop me a line. Ask me a question. Be glad to help you. Man. And check, you know, people. <laughs> Tell you, you don't know what to call anybody. And I don't want to hear that there's some kind of new generic name as of today. Forget it. You know, if you're a girl or a guy and you're really an artist and that's your focus, get in touch with me if you got a question. <laughs> let's not, uh, let's not uh, post stuff like, oh, he said this for a human. Let's face it, our makers made us and they abandoned us. And now they're about to decimate us because we are so stupid the way that we manage the earth and our stewardship of the planet, that they're probably going to just annihilate us. 
with great big ping pong ball guns or something. But I don't think it's going to be good. You see how we're finding things in this out of nowhere? Put loops in. You can do anything you want. Sorry. All right, I'm going to call that a session. File. Save. Now, I think I'm going to crop that. Save it too. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's try this. We're going to try a crop. I don't know. I never did this. Let's just see. Okay, let's move that marquee with the move tool. Move it up. No. Wait, what's going on? Ay, yay, yay, yay. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. Edit, undo, I don't know what happened. Oh, my gosh. Did I save that or what? This got ugly. Well, let's close it and see what happened. File. This is going to be bad. Close. And nope. Just close it. Let's open it. File. We'll see how recently we saved it. Because the machine tricked me. It likes to trick you. File. Uh, every video has to do this to me. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Okay, Affinity's not responding. Hang on one second. All right. Open. You know what we'll do? We'll open recent, but uh, let me see if I can find it. It's one of these two. So let's see if it's this one. Oh, phase two, yeah. There we go. What do we have? Ding dong. Come on, machine. We're waiting. I got an audience. Pop it. Pop it open. There we go. All right. So let's click outside the realm. There we go. We saved it. We're good. So let's uh, magnify one more time. Have a look and I'll stop the video. And move around a little bit. Okay, I'll save it as a JPEG to handle that myself. Thanks for watching. Uh, how do I stop the video? That's another question. All right, let's see. I'm going to put that cursor over there and stop. Where are we stopping?